Hey, everybody. This is Scott with Witness Underground, the documentary, and Witness Underground podcast. We are in a live Kickstarter right now, so we're doing a special series of interviews. This is our last few days of the campaign, um, witnessunderground.com. Today we have with us Scott Arisa. Am I saying your name right, your last name? You are, actually. That's Arisa. awesome. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, yeah, so Scott and I know each other. Two Scots. The Scots interview. We know each other <laughs> through an organization called Democracy, so we're going to talk about how we got connected and so that's been a really big part of our core team, um, getting the word out. And he has some experience with Kickstarter, so we're going to get into that. Uh, how are you doing today, Scott? Uh, doing great. How about yourself? It's a good day. It's it's kind of a it's yeah. a very crazy week. <laughs> we have just the three days left with the campaign, so it's like all about getting sure. the comments. And we have like twelve <laughs> interviews went live, so it's all about like oh. talking to people in the comments, responding to people, and then doing like last week outreach that you and I've both been doing. Like, hey, it's the last day. Can you share share the links on your social? But yeah, it's good. Um, I'm mm, actually in so Panama. Close. Yeah, we're so close. It's, okay, that's the exciting <laughs> thing. I can share some up news. So the campaign is at seventy eight percent right now. Uh, Fifteen thousand six hundred and eighty dollars, I think, or something something close to that. <laughs> so, and that's crazy. It's been it's been like it was at sixty something percent a couple days ago. So feeling really good about the last push here. And then I think all the shows that we got on and I got on and a bunch of other people on our team got on have been really starting to like have momentum and also like uh, people react to like, it's a shorter, shorter amount of time and, and we're getting close to the end. But yeah. Yeah. How is it going it's for cool. you? It's, it, it, um, oh, it's, it's been going great. It's been, uh, yeah, really cool to see, like you said, like a lot of, um, a lot of people, the story is clearly resonating and, and connecting with people. So there's a lot of interest in, in showing and hosting and, and spreading the word, which is, yeah, it's just, it's really cool to see. What are some of the cooler <laughs> moments or like people that we've been in touch with from your perspective from this campaign? Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been a mix. Like uh, like honest, uh, if I'm being honest, it, it's been hard to kind of almost um, like keep up <laughs> with all of the different people because I, I feel like I um, I, I wake up or, or uh, leaving work, I, I check messages and there's like a new show or or a new something that's uh, <laughs> that's popped up with uh, with the yeah. name on it. So. <laughs> um, but so cool. uh, like on a personal front, it's been also really cool just connecting with people um, within um, the people that I've been messaging, like just, yeah, people from from high school, people from college and and just catching up. So, yeah, that's a really interesting part of like, it sounds daunting, like go ask people for money. And that's what people usually think of when they think of <laughs> yeah. a GoFundMe or a buy my coffee or whatever they're called. Um, and that, yeah, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, all the Seed and Spark, all the different ones. It's like, oh, I don't want to ask my friends and family for money. But really, you're like, check out this cool piece of art that's I think is important. Totally, yeah. It's a very different message than I need your money. Please give it to me. It's it's like we spent years making this thing that we think is going to change the world or like it's just really cool, which is way better news than like, hey, did you hear about the bombing and all those people that died? Which is the normal <laughs> news, right? Or like the for sure, doofus, for sure. doofus in politics <laughs> is uh, said something really <laughs> stupid again. <laughs> so like when you're doing this it's that's been a cool part of it is like we're not asking for money we're asking to like check out a cool thing we made and if people like it then they're supporting it because it's like oh yeah that is really cool i think you guys are awesome. yeah exactly Do more it, it's it it's and it's also cool to uh to be able to share because like i've i've shared um like kickstarters and indiegogos and stuff for for other projects by people i don't know so like why wouldn't i be excited to to share something from someone that i do know or from something that i've been yeah. involved in so it, yeah it's it's like yeah. being able to present it from from that perspective like you said of like hey i made this like really cool thing i i'm helping to make this really cool thing or get this cool thing out there is uh yeah it's 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 actually a really like nice conversation yeah <laughs> And then, like you said, like all of a sudden you're just messaging everyone you've ever met in decades. And then in all of a sudden <laughs> these amazing conversations, you're like, oh, cool. That's awesome. You've been up. What have you been up to? Oh, yeah. It's been years since we talked. Yeah. Oh, well, let me get to totally. you up. And I've gotten so many emails. I'm like, oh, my God, I, I need to respond to this friend of mine who now lives in Ecuador or this person who had their second kid. And I didn't know that. And, and I'm like, <laughs> I want to say hi to all these people. And it's like I'm running out of time to do so. Um, but it's, it's sure. an awesome problem to have. Like, I can't respond to my friends yeah. fast enough. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh no, I have too, I have too many friends, and I have to talk to too many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the coolest problem to have ever. Um, <laughs> so, so what are the other projects that you've worked on? 
and with Kickstarter uh, so campaigns th- in the past. Yeah. So so in terms of like working on projects, this this is actually um, like <laughs> honestly one of if not the uh, the first. Um, I, I've worked on some kind of like local productions and things like that, but it's it's an area at, that again? I've always been. Uh, I'm in uh, I'm in Alberta, Canada, so uh, okay. way up in the north. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's it's an area it's an area that I've always been really interested in and and always wanted to to do work in. And um, yeah, not to say that like um, Alberta doesn't have a film community because we we've actually had things on and off. And like The Last of Us, most recently was uh, was filmed oh, here, and that was like a major production. I love production. The Last of Us. Oh, it's so yeah. Good. There you go. So yeah, Very so cool. a lot of it was there. Where yeah, we're um, I have to take a look at the shoot map because uh, i want to yeah i want to look at maybe leading a tour through some of the like shooting locations and things like oh, that's that. a fun idea um yeah. yeah right um i think that'd be really fun but uh, yeah it, it's not um it's not the it's not as dense as like even say like vancouver or toronto are, are usually the major uh filming locations uh for canada so mm-hmm. um yeah it, it's just something that i've wanted to look into and then being involved with the uh with the f- uh with the filmocracy group and just kind of being active in their server which is how we connected and and uh yeah. when you put out the word looking for people to to help out i thought hey this is a, a really good chance to to finally get involved with something yeah that i mean you've been <laughs> such a you're on the core core team like we put the word out to a lot of people and actually a lot of people said yes to look, we had a hour, half hour long conversation about like what it is, how it goes. And I'm, I'm learning. So mm-hmm. like, I'm learning how to manage a core team um, of a Kickstarter. Yeah, I think but, we all are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think everyone's like, I mean, obviously the people who are like really interested are really emerged and like just kept with it. And it's been awesome. And most of them have been authors. Um, just a shout out Denise wise out of England and um, Anthony Mathenia and Ryan Sutter, who's in the movie, and then um, Micah Allen Loesch, uh, who's the author of the Apostasy Trilogy. I think that's the main the main group. And then there's a bunch of people who like said yes, and they're like, wait a minute, that's just a lot, and I have a lot of stuff going on in my life, which is quite understandable. <laughs> and so they backed off, but they've been like really supportive. In, and there was like another level. It's like core team or street team. And those people backed off, but they've been done way more than any street team member. Like they, Most of them like run their own podcasts or a YouTube channel, and so they've like, really hyped up the thing way more than we were going to ask uh, the street team anyway so it's, it's been really, we have a team of like 25 people but you're on the you're like in it and you've been really consistent so i really appreciate that <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it's been it's been really cool just seeing um, a project from like this side of it finally, and yeah, uh, yeah it's something I definitely hope to do more of. <laughs> yeah. So with filmocracy, just to give mm-hmm. the audience a brief thing, we did we went to eleven film festivals, and I think six of them are are mem- are mentionable because like we want a reputation tied <laughs> to them forever. And and the last one was filmocracy. And the cool thing about filmocracy was I was living in Los Angeles. Um, the last like four years, I just recently got left um, Los Angeles. I'm in, in Panama now. So if you hear rainstorms and thunder and lightning, it's because I'm in the <laughs> rainy area. But democracy was like on that ride, the coolest little win for us or big. It was a win. It was a big win for us. Um, it was Los Angeles. I was right there the, wrapping up the whole thing. And um, John Fitzgerald from Slam Dance runs the festival. But the team of filmocracy, the website and the film festival, um, platform that they run john and paul june no no sorry paul june and uh philip june philip june Phil, yeah. <laughs> yeah your buddies how do you know yeah. them again did you, did you talk uh about we them? we actually uh well uh phil uh phil and i go way back as uh, as gaming buddies we just uh yeah it was actually a, a friend of a friend kind of situation where uh, a friend of mine was playing with them and i got brought into kind of their gaming group and then um slowly made my own connections and yeah so i have known phil uh for a while now i've met his uh, his brother paul way more recently and uh yeah they put out a word when they were when they were in their own kickstarter actually for filmocracy and uh, and i backed that and um stayed in contact and and participate fairly regularly in in their discord and yeah that's and then that's how we met so that's the yeah, whole that's really cool. <laughs> history there <laughs> yeah and what i was going to say a minute ago was like all the people that decided to join the kickstarter some of them that couldn't eventually like or that didn't understand what it was and you know it's it, we all are learning um you like one one of the guidances from the guy who were like doing the training from um, justin giddings and the kickstarter guy uh he he said like people that come from like a completely different community are often the best people's like put a wide cast a wide net and see who like pops totally. out and i posted in the discord for filmocracy and that's where yeah that's where he connected 
Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's you've been you've been by far like one of the most active and like steady. So I really appreciate it. But that, <laughs> yeah, thank you. That, that connection is super interesting for us because like I. I met Justin Giddings through the film festival mastery course that him and John Fitzgerald from Filmocracy Fest run. And that's how I got in touch. That's how I learned about Filmocracy Fest. And um, John, let's see, connecting to them and getting in the film festival and then having like, I went to the after party. I was like the only filmmaker who went to the after party with like the <laughs> Filmocracy crew. Nice. So I was like yeah. singing karaoke with Paul June and Philip and, <laughs> and Paul's wife. I can't remember her name at the moment. Paul, wonderful Polish woman. Um, and John, and we're just like, drinking a little too much and partying in like the Chinese area of Northern uh, downtown uh, Los Angeles until like two, three in the morning. It was so much fun. And what was cool oh, is awesome. like <laughs> everyone in the greater like film community that I had met through film, film festival mastery, who I became friends with and like kept in touch with, they all said nothing but positive things about Paul June. And then film nice. was like That's awesome, rising yeah. up. <laughs> and I've since like, I mean, we, now we communicate on a regular basis. I've like hired them to do our, we did, we're releasing the movie now, but we did like a meet the director, meet the cast and crew weekly screening, private screens. We invited like hundreds of people every week to like watch it with us. It didn't actually work. Um, the platform worked, but like people didn't care to watch a movie. And which is why we're doing the Kickstarter. Cause like we've tried so hard right. to like give the movie away for free. <laughs> and people are like, <laughs> stream a movie when you want at a certain time. Like that doesn't make any sense. I want to stream it when I want to stream it. So just trying of to follow human yeah. nature. We're like, <laughs> Let's just get it out onto streaming services. But anyway, so those are those are really great connections, and they are actually filmocracy through Paul and Philip um, helped us get our first distribution deal. So like right now, we oh, sent a contract awesome, yeah. during the Kickstarter. <laughs> so like through filmocracy, they got a connection for us. So anyway, I mean, the only thing so only cool. good thing yeah. to say about that is crew, <laughs> that crew they're they're great and they yeah, really helped us doing guide work for sure the, the indie path. <laughs> so I've been talking a lot. Uh, sorry, what is it that draws you to film? And like, why did, what do you, yeah. What draws you to film? Um, yeah. What draws me to film? Well, um, it's, uh, it's kind of, I guess, always just really been, uh, a part of my life in, in some way or another. Like I, I, like many kids probably grew up, um, you know, watching Disney or, or whatever my parents would grab from, uh, from when Blockbuster was still a thing, which is dating myself. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I have a, a lot of, I remember Blockbuster. I think I still probably have my membership card kicking around somewhere <laughs> if I really uh, bothered to True do it. True nostalgia. Closet. But, um, but yeah, I, I had, uh, I, I have a lot of, like, I, I think a weirdly core memory now is, uh, is me, is kind of just walking through the, the shelves of Blockbuster and just looking at all the the and they were vhs cases at that time which is further uh, <laughs> dating me but uh yeah. but yeah I, I it it was it was one of those things that started as a a very casual thing i think like it starts for most people where you just you know kind of rent whatever and watch whatever and and don't think too much about it but as i as i got older it was just something that i really like to kind of sit and and think about more and like and um, not just from kind of like a like a critical or an analysis side, but also from a like how did they how did they get this shot or like what did they use to to make the movie like look this way? And so it's something that I've always really liked to kind of look into is all of the like behind the scenes stuff and all of the production things. And um, yeah, so um, come to now and it's uh, something that yeah I've, I'm trying to kind of more actively work my way kind of like behind the camera in some <laughs> some way shape or form and uh yeah just just it's always been something that's really uh really interesting and, and really um uh evocative and and i guess mysterious in a way too um so how do you do I, it? I just yeah how do you do it and and what what does it look like behind the camera and yeah <laughs> cool i'm gonna this is reminding me of something i just discovered and it's, it's a bummer that i discovered mm -hmm. it now um after the fact but <laughs> It's called yeah. Shelby Oaks is a movie and the guy who made it. Okay. You might've heard of him. Chris Stuckman. Have you heard of that name? It rings a bell. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen it though. He's got a few I million, write this down. a few yeah. million subs on, on YouTube from he okay. says film, film reviews and he breaks down storytelling. He's been doing it for like 10 years or yes. something. He's got a very successful channel. And so he has always, he used to make like B films and like cop, like fake versions of, um, mm -hmm. Indiana Jones and he, he did a Kickstarter last year and now he's in oh, it. very like cool. deep in production for Shelby Oaks, That's which so is his awesome. first horror script. <laughs> and the Kickstarter Shelby was Oaks, so sorry. good. They tried to raise like, I don't know, it was something like $50,000 and they raised like 1.5 million or something. 
because like what they offer oh, wow. was so compelling. And I would love to have copied their Kickstarter and like some, it was inspiring to see it because it's like such a good one, but basically totally, yeah. they're making a horror film. And also, you know, at a certain level they're, they're while they're doing it, they also got a documentary director to shoot the, how do you make a, how do you make this scene so for cool. every scene of the film? <laughs> so like, he's like, no one, it's always a secret. My whole life it's been a secret. So like come behind the scenes with my first debut thing. And that went wild. Like, and I'm so excited to actually see that because I want to make something similar, which is like, how did I make this documentary? I can, I can at least tell that as a way to like give back mm-hmm. to people because it was very much like a student project to make witness underground. Um, but I had right, a lot right. of skills already, but I would love to b- give back. And so if you want to get involved, I'm just going to say this in public because we can, uh, <laughs> I want to make a course on how to make films and it could be really fun okay. for someone who hasn't done it to help me make that. Um, yeah, totally. Or, or uh, yeah. This movie uh, right <laughs> all right. So, well, yeah. I, yeah, we've, we've got you on camera with the offer. So I, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, happily let's... take you up on that. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking about doing like a paid course, like a low cost, like how do you do it course, but then like for the community that I'm a part of for the ex witnesses or ex cult members or whatever, um, like free <laughs> access or super low price or something like that. It's just like an idea I'm tossing around, but I want to make that because I already I have the skills. Yeah, you know, yeah that sounds cool. Totally. Do you, is there any particular thing in filmmaking that you would like now that you're like opening the door to like getting involved that you want to do or like that draws you? Um, yeah, I, I've gotten more into, um, so I, I've been working as a, as a photographer for the last, uh, five, six years now. Mm. And so like that, that part of it, like, um, the, the actual like photography or or cinematography has always been kind of my, my way of getting in. Like I, I wish I had a better ear, uh, for music. Um, and I, and I played in, in junior high and high school and all that, but yeah, the, the, the theory part of it has always taken a lot of like work for me to, uh, um, to, to process and to understand. But uh, I, and, and I think the, the visual is just, it's so, um, like kind of immediately like uh, immediately apparent because you you just see it <laughs> yeah. um but it's it's been cool kind of learning it that way and i'm like a very um tech and like gear focused person kind of anyways like i've always been really into computers and like it was my trade before that so um like yeah. it's uh the the photography um of it and the cinematography of it is um kind of the it's my first point of interaction with any film i guess when i try and kind of like look at it or break it down mm-hmm that's really interesting. Yeah. Key, mm-hmm. the key things that I've, cause I also went to school for visual arts and did photography for a long time. <laughs> as like, I tried to make that my career. And then I was like, I think right. everyone has a cell phone now. So I kind of like, like damn it. <laughs> yeah, Everybody it, can it do the magic. A, yeah. Everyone's a photographer now for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. But there's obviously like a big difference from a wide angle cell phone shot where everything's always sharp and motion blur doesn't exist to like working with Boca and, totally yeah nice quality lenses and yeah, yeah. And, and and like the lighting alone is its entire own yeah, exactly. <laughs> discipline lighting. and art <laughs> that's probably the best like, thing i learned when i was in photography school was there's a whole series on lighting that we did throughout the entire course that that's nice, like yeah. totally changed how i do everything you might not see it in this video because i'm just like in an airbnb <laughs> place right now but <laughs> with whatever lights are available <laughs> but I, I do own lights they're just not here um nice but yeah <laughs> One thing I learned is that, and part of the reason I'm like, okay with doing a live and just an interview uh, is I used to be super like into the visuals and like making sure it was perfect visually. And I've learned that like, you really need story first, quality audio, and then visuals, which kind of was a hit to me. Cause I'm also similar in that I like have, I usually have visuals as the first point of interaction. My whole life I've been <laughs> photography. Right. Um, so I have to like bow to the superiority of story and then audio quality. <laughs> and then for sure yeah it's we like... <laughs> have a, a blurry photo from uh and, and ken burns it and people are like "Ooh, that's awesome <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so but yeah that's cool that's great and also the having the tech background is really important because it shows that you're a detail-oriented person um probably if you worked in that space so having those two things <laughs> yeah. is in, in filmmaking is really important from yeah learning. absolutely <laughs> and stick to sticking to something in with a detail oriented mind is like half of the battle. Cause most people that want to make a movie don't ever do it. Cause it's really hard. It yeah. It's a long time. For sure. So <laughs> yeah, everyone's, everyone's got the idea of the movie that they want to make for sure. 
Yeah. And do you have one? Do you have a script or like an idea or a, a genre you want to work on first? I, I've actually really liked, I, I, I know this, and this is another thing, like, like photographers, I think, um, like movie critics and that have kind of sprung up like weeds as well with, with social media and everything. Um, but, uh, that, that's kind of actually more the area that I've really wanted to get into. So I guess in a way it would be like, um, uh, like shooting myself, but I, I want to like talk about movies and, and show people kind of the stuff that I really like and, and that I've really found. Hmm. You think you want to do like a, a channel, like a YouTube channel on the topic or something? Yeah, that's what I've been kicking around for a while. I, I was kind of I, I was kind of in the like very early stages of like mapping out what that would look like. And um, my timing was impeccable because it was like right when the writer strike started <laughs> and uh, and then and then SAG followed. And, and luckily they're they're over now so I can kind of resume it. But yeah, I, I didn't want to like do any coverage, obviously, of Struff Productions. So it uh, kind of <laughs> had to put that on the back burner for a little while. But I'm, I'm really excited to get back to it. Cool. That's great. Yeah. And that's a great way to learn a lot of the details of storytelling and, and filmmaking because you have to, if you're cutting your totally, own channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and to make it, yeah, to assemble it all in like a, a, a compelling and concise way and, a, and an accessible way. So yeah. I think, yeah, a lot of, a lot of parallels for sure. That's really cool. Yeah. You should, I'm excited mm-hmm. to see you do that. I'll probably learn something. Yeah. <laughs> when you're making a movie or trying to get it out in the world, it takes up like, well, for me, it took up the last five years of my life. So watching movies has been like the least important thing in my life. I yeah, do still watch <laughs> fair like, enough, like once a month or something. <laughs> but a lot of people are like seven hours a week of content. And I'm like, I make seven hours a week of content. I can't, I can't, <laughs> yeah, I can't watch other people's stuff. <laughs> Yeah, there's only so many hours in a day when you're on the when you're when you're on the production side. Yeah, exactly. But it's fun. I love it. It's like following that dream has been like the most exciting and interesting thing. And and it's yeah, like totally. I've so many other things I absolutely love in my life. Like I love a lot of uh, individual like adventure sports, like mountain biking and snowboarding, and, and I love um, m- making music. But it's like, well, this is the thing I know for sure I want to like go for all the way. So everything else falls away. And uh, for better or for worse, I'm in the filming <laughs> because of it. But it's cool when you when you find something you love and you just go for it. It's like the best. It's yeah, like I wake totally. Up I'm, I'm like, like, I'm excited to sit at my computer. Most people wake up in the morning and sit at the computer to do something <laughs> for somebody else. I'm like, I know yeah, it's exactly yeah. the same situation, <laughs> but I love it because it's mine, kind of thing. Totally, yeah, and it, it and it's cool with a with a documentary project, especially like, um, it's uh, it's a subject that's very like. I, I think in general documentaries, it's always a subject that's very close to the director. And so that kind of um, that uh, passion and that enthusiasm and everything like really comes through. And that that was what kind of initially grabbed me about uh, when you were posting about it in the Filmocracy Discord as well. Like it, it was um, uh it can it can be t- like there there are so many documentaries coming out now as well. Um, but it was cool to see one like come up in. Um, in a server that I was uh, that I was in, and then I got to find out kind of more about like uh, like your story and and um, and the story of the documentary. And yeah, it was just a really cool kind of like organic way, I guess, of coming to a to a new to a new movie, new project. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I love that. Thanks again <laughs> for joining. Oh yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> what What do you think we should make next? You're on the team. Now, oh man. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean. If if I'm if I'm being really selfish, like my my favorite thing has always been horror. But if uh, that that's probably harder to make if you want to stick to like a documentary. <laughs> yeah, I I think I I'd be down to get into the narrative space. What what's interesting about that is it's like with a documentary, it's like let's go capture interviews, and then we'll see what we can mm-hmm. piece together in the edit. And then it's like you have yeah. ten to twenty. You have more to find stuff. that kind of yeah. The directing's <laughs> in the editing in the editing room, and it takes way longer. Whereas a narrative totally. movie is like, well, here's text and writing. Let's write mm-hmm. it and make the story beautiful and perfect and hit all the emotional parts. And you like, and then it's like, okay, well, let's just, let's design the scene and who's going to be, who's talking here. What's the dialogue? What are we showing? And, and, and you, you plan it all in advance and it could be years of planning in advance. Or if you're really dedicated and you have a great team, probably a shorter time, but then the shooting's always either way, the shooting's like six to 15 days or something. Um, because with narrative though it's like super planned and that might be yeah, a nice yeah everything's break. blocked out and yeah yeah totally and then, the, then the edit's like super short 
because you know exactly what you <laughs> shot, you know exactly why mm -hmm. you shot it, and you have five takes of it, and you already marked which one was the best one. So the editor is like, great, scene three, or yeah, take, <laughs> totally. take 14 or whatever. All right, other everything else is not even going to be considered. Um, but yeah, I, I would love that. And I, I think it's interesting you bring that up, uh, the horror side. Um, we want Witness Underground um, went to 11 festivals that it won an award at a horror film fest at Genre Blast. And I'm very proud of oh, that. Oh, that's funny. I mean, a documentary <laughs> that won an award at a horror fest is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Especially, it's such a dark topic. And that team is amazing. Actually, a lot of those people are connected to the Filmocracy crew in some way in, many, in uh, LA. And they're super cool, like the people I met out there. Uh, very helpful. Nice. Very, and they're very in the horror space. Like <laughs> one of the guys, the director, <laughs> he, he posted mm -hmm. on this... Uh, collaborative filmmaker group he's like i need he's like i need this might be a weird question i need something that you could find in a woman's bedroom that like i'm i'm, sure, I'm asking for a friend guys it needs to be able to like <laughs> go through her throat and come out the other side <laughs> like what could you find in a woman's bedroom that could go all the way through her neck <laughs> That's and then all so the it was like 170 <laughs> comments and, and like the director's like i thought about a dildo i just don't think like i just don't think it's actually <laughs> possible for a dildo to go all the way through even enter it's like <laughs> like yeah <comments. laughs> considering <laughs> these like intense logistics <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i i met their team at their last horror premiere in la it's like all of you that worked on it the the dp um and then that woman's husband are like super involved. And I do a lot with that director. And then I met like the whole cast and I met the guy who made like the, they, they wanted to take someone's head and like rip it by their jaw and separate the head from okay. the body yeah. and like have the spine, like go out and have all, you know, <laughs> all the parts of their organs flying everywhere. Yeah. And I met the guy who like, he made the cast of one of the actors so that they could like pull apart this fake body and do that. And it, oh, like, that so was the most, <laughs> They were having the time of their lives and it, it's so gory and like every single actor in the whole thing dies. It's like just, and it's like a one room. <laughs> they all are in a bar trapped inside. I don't know. It's a whole thing. It's so funny and like disgusting, but like so much fun yeah, to work it's, on. It's a, kind of <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's the thing is I, I, I think that like, like I, I love watching horror movies, but I think the idea of, the idea of it or, or just like the the production of it must be so fun because it's it's in some ways kind of the most open playground for like every part of filmmaking because yeah you have to make all of these like insane props or like wild vfx or like yeah <laughs> there's a lot of improvising too like well i think totally, we didn't get yeah. quite <laughs> enough blood to fly onto that wall let's do it again but like can somebody get a hose <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah i'll sit underneath the, the billiards table and i'll spray the hose just say when <laughs> you know like yeah there's a really yeah. there's a really cool movie um now now that you, or once you have a little bit more time or or if you want to make it your uh your one movie that you uh, you check out it's called one cut of the dead is probably mm -hmm. one of my uh favorite you know, actually, I might go so far as to say it might just be one of my favorite movies, but it's um, uh, it's about it's a Japanese movie. Um, it's a micro budget, like super indie thing. Um, but it's about this uh, crew that's trying to film um, a horror movie and then and it's it's a zombie horror movie and they've rented out this like abandoned um, facility uh, warehouse to do it in. And then real zombies start to show up kind of thing. Uh, and so there's two very long uh, single takes <laughs> that that bookend the show. And so the first one is your regular zom zombie movie. And then there's a twist at the end where the last cut um, totally reframes and recontextualizes the movie. And it's it's very funny and it's very charming. And like it it's a horror movie, but it's also kind of like this really it, it has like a uh, surprisingly feel good ending and like it's just yeah it's, it's very charming and i think like if you work in film um you'd probably really appreciate it as well there's kind of like an extra level there for you <laughs> what what brings that extra level in storytelling or in the one takes or um it's it's tough to talk about without kind of ruining the twist okay so i'll yeah i'll just have to okay. say like if you do if you do check it out uh just just send me a message and let me know what you thought and and also anyone who watches this like check out one cut of the dead it's a really cool movie one it caused like dead. a small revolution in in uh 
Japanese filmmaking where now there's a, a community of, I can't, I can't remember what the word is, it, but there's a specific genre for these like micro budget movies that are designed to look like they're filmed in one take or maybe are actually filmed in one take. And uh, yeah, there's there's been a few of them since then and it's really neat. Yeah. That's the whole concept of the micro budget or the extreme <laughs> micro budget films is, is this group I was talking about in LA, um, <laughs> Jason Horton, Jay Horton. Um, you got to check out his stuff. He's great. He does. He has a very helpful. Oh, okay. Yeah. Film. In fact, nice. I think he used to have a podcast and then he dropped it to go full YouTube. Um, but, and then he's on the, it's like, there's like a film production Facebook. Well, I'll share it with you and I'll put it in the link in the description, but it's a great yeah, filmmakers. Sounds good. Hub. And they're always talking about fun things and like help very, very helpful community. And it's thousands and thousands of people across. Oh, the that's world. so cool. But the, and, the, and he does like one feature film a month. Like it's amazing what this guy oh, can wow. do. It's a mix of documentary <laughs> and horror and other types of films, but mostly documentaries and horror. And then he has like his connections and he's just like a machine. Like he just pumps out constantly. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I, you'd have to be if you do one a month. That's that's so impressive. And and his budgets it, usually uh, are between five and ten thousand dollars for everything he does. Wow. And that's what that's what makes it financially viable. But like he's so yeah, fast course, and yeah. he's so skilled that he's able to turn that into a career. And then he talks about how to turn your own content into a career with step by step stuff. So like He's got this like how to do it on a budget, how to make how to make it successful. That's so interesting. Yeah, and he talks about the finances. Yeah, of it, that's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Okay. So there's, one a, there's a really cool kind of. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 you. Oh yeah, no. I was I was just saying like it, it's it's been really cool. I think just in the last um, probably just in the last few years that um, like YouTubers have been becoming. Um, I I don't want I, I don't I don't like to say like real filmmakers, but they're they're moving into the Hollywood space and like actually getting. Um, there was um, a few years back there was uh, Arctic, which was produced by I'm going to space on his name now that I actually need the information. But he uh, he had a music channel actually. He played guitar or has a music channel. He plays guitar, but he he. Uh, made and produced um, Arctic, which is this uh, group of people that get stranded um, from a, their plane crashes and they're stranded and they have to kind of try and fi find their way to uh, some sort of salvation. But I think they managed to get, I think, Mads Mikkelsen for it. Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, and wow. um, yeah, and uh, just, yeah, just, if, just YouTubers are starting to show up like in the, the Hollywood or like the traditional film space. And it's like really cool to see that kind of crossover. This person, Mads Mikkelsen, um, is this a, a U.S. actor or German actor? Because I was just thinking about Dark. Uh, he... and I was going to bring out Dark, but and there's a character named Matt. Oh, yeah. that, like triggered me. Yeah, he's um, uh, he's Dane. I'm gonna get skewered for this. Yeah, Danish. He's Danish. Danish. Okay. He was. Uh, he yeah. He played uh, Hannibal in uh, the in the NBC Hannibal TV series. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. He, uh, okay, he was him. recently in a. Yeah, he was recently in a, a really cool, very dark comedy called. Uh, called Druk, which was uh, him and it's, I think it's very loosely based on a true story, but he and his group of teacher friends decide to see if they can stay drunk 24 seven basically. <laughs> and cause they, cause they think it helps them kind of like loosen up and be more effective um, professionally and, and at home and stuff oh, like that. And it, go, it goes plot. well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Isn't one of them a teacher or something? <laughs> Yes, he is. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a no, teacher. That film is so, yeah, that film's great, and the ending is yeah, such, it, such a beautiful payoff at the dock on the ocean. Yeah, like, it, it's it's, it's so such good. a it's such a it's such a crazy real life story too. Because the um the director, uh, this was um, let's see what's this? Uh, I'm yeah, it was another round in English. Uh, Thomas Winterberg. Um, and I was like connecting it back to how you said like um, narrative films, kind of everything's all set up. This this one has like a really interesting, um, very sad actually um, behind the scenes story where he was originally planning to uh, film it with his daughter, and it was actually written as more of a straightforward comedy, um, a, a, like a, like a haha -ha comedy, and she actually was killed in a in a traffic collision with a drunk driver, and. Uh, he had to uh, like significantly rework the film because she was gonna yeah she I, she was gonna have a major role in it i don't know if she was starring in it or not but uh yeah he significantly reworked this film as a result to be much more um uh to take it, it's a very different take <laughs> um yeah and uh yeah just just a, like a really uh like 
sad but fascinating like he ended up winning an award for it and his uh his academy award speech was heartbreaking but <laughs> um yeah just yeah rough that's really, actually really an interesting, interesting production anecdote yeah it's an interesting point to make <laughs> about creating content especially with things like i'm doing with interviews but even acting with a with narrative where you have you're putting someone's face and body and voice into on screen like I've been to a couple of film festivals. One, one particular I actually love, and I've met the people that run it and all the people behind the scenes in it. Now it's called dances with films and it's in Los Angeles. And it's a really big <laughs> indie fest and they pack the right. house at the Chinese theater in LA. It's like nice. 500 seats <laughs> full or half full, but like really filled with human beings where a lot of film festivals I've been to are pretty empty. There'll be like 10 people, 20 people seating in a whole theater. Like that place is like, well, one of their, one of their things is like, do you have an audience is part of their selection <laughs> criteria. Yeah. Um, they want to sell tickets and that's part of how you run a film festival successfully. Of course. Yeah. But they also pick great films and they have the luxury of doing that in Los Angeles, especially. And then all the actors, half of them live there and people that are involved and then their families. So it's easy to bring people, but they, they, they're a great crew and it's a great festival. But I went to one where I was like, Oh my God, this is the most sold out. It's like a hundred percent full. Like, st- like there's no, people are waiting. They wish they could get in, but they couldn't. <laughs> it was because like one of the actresses had died and so like the actual screening oh, wow. of the premiere of the movie at this really important film festival was like a memorial mm-hmm. to her death and it's like oh, oh my wow God. that's crazy well, uh, I, I what, do you remember what movie it was by any chance mm, this is a 2022 where i went i believe to support some other filmmaker friends and it was in the oh, okay. block so i was just going to whatever yeah. was that day yeah fair enough but yeah, I I'm don't wondering if it was like Triangle of Sadness or something because I know that the uh, the uh, one of the leads um, passed away. Okay, I mean it I was it was premiering, but <laughs> it's an amazing way to like honor that person and like those people really did. So it's like going to a wake or a funeral for sure for that person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole Q and A after is like in support of them and their family, and it's like wow, this is right? Like way more than I signed up for. I thought I was going to like fun narrative film at its premiere and but it's also beautiful <laughs> yeah. it's like such a show of support uh, in the human spirit totally and and such an interesting like and and so like so fascinating too because like that like like you said it's it's kind of like a wake but you're going to the thing that like you see <laughs> the actor in and you get to see kind of their their last thing and yeah that's yeah, yeah and I've, that's i had so something cool. similar with me where like one of the most important interviews i've done um the person died and it's like, I haven't released the interview yet. So now the interview I did is like, Oh wow. Yeah. The last thing that their family has to remember. And it's like the person telling their life story, which is also this really incredibly important thing. And she's like, Oh my God, I didn't realize when I did that after that, you know, that casual interview in the afternoon was going to yeah. be such an important <laughs> thing for like the rest of this person's family for now immortalizing this person. So releasing that's now like, well, I'm not going to just release it casually. It's like, I'm not just going to do a live, you know, it wasn't just a live interview or casually. <laughs> yeah. It's like, now it's this important thing that like, they actually played some of it at the, at the wake of the funeral year. Oh, wow. And I'm just like, I will work on that, but I'm going to spend my time on it. But yeah, it, like that part of filmmaking is not anything I ever thought of before because, mm-hmm. but you're actually doing this really intimate thing with somebody and it becomes important. Totally. And, and yeah, and to have something like kind of like emergent like that and like not like not really knowing its uh, its significance at the time. And then all of a sudden it has this new kind of weight to it. Like, yeah. Yeah. So fascinating. Yeah. But yeah, um, part of that is also like I think horror is a great space because it's it's cheap to do. The entire audience mm-hmm. is like having fun. They're ready for it to be low budget and they just want <laughs> some shock moments and, and like funny. Totally. Moments and, like be scared and like trigger like it's like jump scary you know that kind of stuff it's interesting yeah. that there's such a big following for that and you have like an entire channel like shutter now supporting like you can support these artists yes yeah and, <laughs> and there's entire film festivals like uh be, through the same crew in la i'm gonna just name drop uh, michael j epstein and his wife uh sofia casciola i believe um they're an amazing musician and filmmaker duo um they introduced me to, we met at Genre Blast because they had a film, a couple of films that they've done there. They've got a new film there every year now. Um, Smash, something with Smash. I kind of screwed up. Anyway, that was playing recently. And then there's one in Texas. It's like South Texas something. There's also a genre festival in South in San Diego. And there's one in Boston. And there's like, there's like underground festivals. If you type it in, underground festivals, genre festivals, horror festivals. There's like an entire 
other yeah, like, this... <laughs> category of festivals. Which don't don't usually play documentaries. So like I think we're might be one of the only documentaries to ever win a, <laughs> a horror film fest. Wow. Maybe there was, <laughs> partially wasn't. It was because they didn't have that much competition. Um, but sure. it's kind of a cool thing to like, okay, well, we're exposing abuse in a cult, and that's a pretty that's like it's almost worse that's than a, like a horror a horror film because yeah, like, like have, it's have real. It, like it's real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like more scary. <laughs> it's like in your mm -hmm. down the street in your neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to do horror a psychological thriller type stuff or more like gore or um I I like the more um I, I'm and it's it's funny that we're because I I think that like also the appeal of horror is that it has I think a much wider range of like yeah it's like tolerance for quality like there's the the stuff that's like very schlocky and and corny and cheesy and like there are people uh, like people love that and then but there's also like I would say horror there there's been more. Um, kind of elevated or like more kind of intentional um, stuff that is looking to be kind of more of a like um, traditional or, or like award worthy film like Get Out is a really good example from uh, from a few years back now and, and yeah, really so most good. of Jordan Peele's stuff. Um, yeah, Jordan Peele's amazing. So that, that film was yeah, really <laughs> yeah, or, totally. Um, so I, I summer. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, Her uh, Hereditary Midsummer. Ari Aster, that's the director's name. <laughs> so good. I love um, that film so much. Yeah, so it's so it's it's really it, like that. That's also why I like it is kind of you can kind of go in 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 a way that you don't see in other genres, like um, or or not as frequently, I think. Um, and it's really yeah, it's it's really cool to kind of see um, it the the like horror being more like uh like legitimized i guess or it's being more kind of like seriously considered and yeah. uh, and that's really cool so that's that like that's eventually the place that i would definitely like to end up in is is something more um more intentional and and still yeah like has some sort of um something that i'd like to <laughs> say um say to the audience but it's uh yeah, like I said, definitely still a still a work in progress or very very early stage. <laughs> have you have you done an episode with your reviews? Uh, sorry, have you done an episode yet of the? No, not yet. yet. I've got, I've got my I've got my whole whole setup ready to go, but I I I have a good idea. I think of of where I want to start, so that's okay. good. I I just happened to see a movie that um I I really liked um actually last night pretty much I, I went to see Priscilla. Okay, <laughs> Priscilla. Okay. Could you yeah. do like a, a five minute single scene or like single thing you want to say about Priscilla in your first thing and like do it here live? You can say no. Oh, <laughs> do it here live. Okay, let's see. I yeah, I have to I have to put myself in it because yeah, I was I was looking at more shorter form for like um, uh, since everyone's on TikTok right now, I figure that's probably the best place to build an audience. But um, the the thing the thing that really jumped out at me with Priscilla um, is kind of something that's been bothering me about. Um, biopics in general for a while and i i think that like uh look bohemian rhapsody is the one that i'm gonna <laughs> point the finger at where i think that a lot of biopics that i've seen recently have been made um about the legend of the person and and not the actual person itself like i feel like we got a very sanitized look at um uh freddie mercury and i think we got a very um kind of sanitized look at uh like elton john for example with rocket man though that one i think um they were going for a more kind of um hyper real thing so it worked a little bit better for me but what i i liked about priscilla is that it didn't um uh it didn't pull any punches as to the relationship between priscilla and elvis i think it was um it felt much more honest than a lot of biopics that I've seen. And I think that really uh, resonated with me. Like they, they didn't shy away from the fact that like Priscilla was 14 when um, Elvis and, and, and her first met and uh, he started pursuing a relationship with her. Um, and it, it did show that, you know, they, they arrived at a relationship that I, I think at least for a time, there was a lot of love in it, but, um, but they also didn't shy away from like how, how, visually weird that looked like they cast an actor for priscilla that was five foot tall and and jacob alordi is like six seven or something like that and so there's like a very radical physical difference between them and um they did a really good job of of making her look uh, making her look very young i think she was uh, i think she's 25 in the movie or the actor is i should say yeah, right. and um and yeah so the, I, I i think because they they kind of showed the um kind of 
um, all uh, all of the or the relationship kind of more in its totality. It made, made it feel much more um, honest and impactful. And mm-hmm. so I, I um, yeah, I think it, I think it did a really good job. It's directed by Sofia Coppola, who mm-hmm. is uh, who is one of the greats for sure. And mm-hmm. uh, and I think this is another great movie from her. And uh, yeah, that's why I don't know if that was five minutes, but that was my my thing on Priscilla. <laughs> cool, that's great. Um, that gave me an insight into what to look for when I watch it. Pretty sure I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> and that's kind of like the idea for like a TikTok, like just like go and do your what you appreciate about a film. Is that like one of the concepts? Yeah, that's that's what I'd like to focus on, and then like like my. My my ambition long term, I think, would be to uh, to do to do longer form stuff. That's that's ultimately where I want to end up. Um, and I, so I think like the TikTok channel would be a really good way to drive people drive traffic to um, the YouTube channel. But in the YouTube, I, I definitely want to do a more comprehensive. Like I, I really I, I think I've like I follow a lot of channels that do um, reviews that look at. Um, or tend to focus on like one specific part, like whether it's the mm-hmm. um, the acting or the cinematography or or the writing or something like that. And what I'd like to do is kind of a longer form series where like one episode would like we'd be looking at one movie and then looking at one piece in kind of each episode. So and and kind of do a more holistic look at a movie, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and just do a really deep dive because one of the um, the channels that I appreciate most, like our specialist channels, where it's someone looking at just the writing or or just the music. I'm going to sh- shout out Sideways 440, even though he's not active right now, but he he's a, a really incredible music channel um, that looks at kind of like mechanically down to the notes being used, like how that helps enhance the story um, metaphorically and 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 um, musically. Very cool. and, uh, and stuff like that so I'd, uh, yeah i'd like to i'd like to just go like really deep into kind of every single component part and and look at kind of how that comes together to make the movie um successful in in some way or in all ways yeah that's great it reminds me of um, david lynch <laughs> gave some advice a long time ago but i i came across it recently which was anyone can make a movie you don't need to be an expert you don't need to have a degree <laughs> Um, get a bunch of like recipe cards or like note cards for doing a speech Mm -hmm. and write down um, 75 names of a scene and then rearrange them into chronological order. Like, I don't know, whatever Mm -hmm. you do on your table or on the floor or whatever. And then um, that's your movie. And then now you have 75 (laughs) things. You have to go write a short, a short moment for a couple minutes of a Mm -hmm. movie and then, or a minute and then go shoot that like anyone can do that and so like making a tiktok um with like short form in mind with the goal of making something bigger it's like yeah now you're working on like dissecting movie making one scene at a time or one element at a time is like really valuable for your education as well as like what you're giving to the audience i think it's a great idea totally and i hope you make that feature it's it's a lot to take on a feature but if you do if you figure out all the little pieces, <laughs> then one day you'll have the vision and be like, I know now how to do all of it. <laughs> I just need to come take yeah. all those skills and combine it into one. Totally. And you probably meet the right people. You'll meet people that will want to do that with you throughout the process of Yes. It. Yeah. That's like the exciting thing about what we're doing right now is is like I met you. I am Anthony Mathenia, who's been really big deal on mm. the back end of the Kickstarter. I've gotten to know like the skill sets of other people. I've gotten to know that authors are awesome at writing, um, which is a big part <laughs> of Kickstarter. Out, yeah. <laughs> and like musicians don't really want to do a Kickstarter because it's a lot of writing. Mm. Authors love it. They think it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're trying to run a so you Kickstarter, need to, you need to find the uh, <laughs> you need to find the uh, the lyricists among the musicians <laughs> to do the writing. <laughs> yeah, maybe the vocalists would be the better. better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, there was just some musicians on our on our team, but um, yeah, there's a lot of authors, which yeah. is really cool. <laughs> um, and the people that run shows and show hosts, they're like, "We could make more content. Let me make something for you. I'll set up my camera and my audio, and then I'll get this thing, and I'll do that, and I'll add this." Up. And it's like, "Oh, cool!" So I have a content creators are awesome people for Kickstarters too. It turns yeah. out, yeah, totally. Shout out, <laughs> shout out, just um, cult hackers, Stephen Mather and uh, Wesley David with Wesley David Music for making some cool content for our campaign. <laughs> yeah and then everyone who's got like anyone who's ever been on a podcast turns out they have a connection to a podcast and they are yes, great people yeah. to have on because sure. <laughs> you've gotten on i put the call out i was like let's try to get on as many podcasts as possible and we sent um 
like 150 cold emails out to all these shows. Some of them I knew and some of them I'd already talked mm-hmm. to, but a lot of them I hadn't, I'd been, I'd been wanting to. And then half the people that are on our team were like, oh, I've been on these 14 shows. Let me just talk to the people that already know me. And they, they, like, <laughs> they like our project. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, awesome. So I got on like an extra eight shows because um, the people that are on our team have already been on shows. So that that's also like a fun piece of the strategy that I didn't quite expect. Yeah. Yeah, the content the content creator one is yeah, it's it's really cool because it's a win win, right? Because they always are looking for stuff to cover too, and like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And that's been the thing for my podcast too, which you might want to think about for your show. Um, if you ever do interviews, because that's like you're doing you're talking about doing solo casting on TikTok, um, but doing interviews yeah. <laughs> or bringing people on, or you can do like remixes, right, or like lives. Yes, um, yeah, stitches and <laughs> yeah, I. I love the concept and it's, I made it like the key to my pot witness underground podcast, which is like the extension of the witness underground documentary that the whole Kickstarter is about. Um, the, the podcast is like, I only bring on people who have an active piece of art to share, whether that's one song right. so a single or an album or a book. And it can be old. Um, that's fine. But like something that they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, this is the thing I made, go check it out. And I mean, that's what, I mean, TV shows have been doing this for a century, but it's it's also fun. Like, let me support your piece of art because they're also hustling that piece of art because they just made yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. So and I'm like happy to be a like one more place to like put their piece of art out into the world and like be like a promotional angle and open open door for a lot of artists. I mean, I don't I don't know if I'm opening doors, but like I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. <laughs> <laughs> but ideally, that's the goal one day is to like help people get to their goal. I love doing that, like making yeah. connections for people. Totally. Um, let's see, we have a few minutes left. Is there any uh, channels that you want to shout out or channels you want to get on or um, things you want to direct people to that you think are super cool? Oh man. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so many, uh, so many YouTube channels. I mean, check out uh, like all, all, uh, attached the link but um i currently work uh in a our manager of photography studio um chocolate studios so i definitely like you to check out our work um okay cool yeah the, uh, the is it most that it's I work all with. stills or what kind of what do you focus uh, that on that is right? stills yeah so we're um we're starting to get more into the video space but um uh primarily stills currently uh, our Portraits. uh photographer yeah photographer uh evan uh evan will is uh he's award-winning nationally and internationally recognized he's um an incredible dude i've been working with him on and off for <laughs> probably over a decade now um but uh he's done all kinds of stuff um commercial portraits landscape um which is what we're focusing on now and we're okay. um going to be leading a bunch of photography and adventure tours um so if people want to yeah take a take a really cool trip um take some really cool photos learn how to take some really cool photos oh, then yeah. um where where it's at wait let's see um, so wait, where are you at what city are you, is the nearest to you Oh, um, so we're uh, so we're gonna be doing uh, um, like a best of Alberta tour. Um, so okay. it'll it'll run out of um, Edmonton, um, which is the capital city there, and uh, we'll take you through. Uh, there's actually some really great uh, kind of like California. There's a lot of biodiversity um, in the province, so we'll uh, either start in the uh, in the mountains and the Rockies and um, go out through. We've got some really cool um, badlands and kind of more desert. Um, looking areas and then we were also very well known for our kind of sprawling (laughs) plain wheat fields canola fields um all that stuff so it'll be a a really cool tour there we're um going to be international we're looking at uh, ecuador we're looking at india um and uh, and europe like expanding uh, your team as well expanding your yes uh expanding our tours yeah okay um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna be all over the place for sure wow like how could somebody, um, yeah. how would they get in touch with uh, getting on a tour if they wanted to do that? Oh, uh, it'll, it'll all be through the, uh, through our website. So it's uh, sharkostudios.com. Link in the description. And uh, we'll be yeah, in, we'll for all the people that are live right now, it's in. not, but it will be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely come check us out. Oh, there's actually a couple of comments. Let me just see. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I think our campaign oh, just hit 18,000. Oh my oh, God. That's I see amazing. That. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what happened. And then Midsummer freaked him out more than, 
more than hereditary okay cool wow that's an yeah, amazing I think news I, to like be live right now that's yeah that's actually so we, awesome we're trying to hit eighteen thousand on friday morning <laughs> like I, like that's like the goal but <laughs> here we are okay yeah. what happened that means we went up three grand while we've been talking and we've Probably. had five total viewers <laughs> that's i'm so excited <laughs> to find out what happened so, i think so, somebody bought one of our um our must have been one of producer the like, producer packages or something yeah yeah gotta check that out that's so awesome yeah oh my god that's that means we're we're so close to being successful keep on keep on supporting Windows <laughs> yeah. underground what's crazy if it, is, if it was you if you're one of the five then thank you <laughs> yeah we got a co-producer credit oh my god i'm so excited that's an amazing that's so yeah. sick very <laughs> cool sorry to interrupt um tours in alberta but <laughs> oh yeah no hey but, um, <laughs> this is important this is this is what we're here for so <laughs> yeah exactly actually let's um can you write in the comments or can i do that only can you see that uh oh no i can see the comments as well yeah but you can't write in it oh join the chat uh oh if, you, I, you type it in. if I had looked i have to connect my youtube account all right let's okay. do this really quickly here <laughs> let's see, see. Can, let's well... test and see if you can multitask yeah. <laughs> so you said Tokyo, Ecuador, and what were the other places yeah. you're uh, to uh, looking looking at India, uh, mm-hmm. and then uh, Scotland will be uh, actually uh, our uh, Evan is moving to Scotland uh, later this year, so um, we'll be kind of scouting that out and and might be setting up a kind of a secondary base there. So this would be like um, adventure guided photography adventure tours. You're going to go to places that are worth photographing, like animals or landscapes or. Right? Yes, yeah, with, uh, yeah, an emphasis on landscape. So the uh, there's there's kind of going to be two different types of tours that we'll be offering. One is the if people are uh, looking to maybe pick up a hobby or or maybe they just want to take a cool trip and take some cool photos. This will be one that um, it won't be as much on like the um, the backpacking and hiking side. We'll be targeting locations that are very easy to get and get out, whether that's driving or like in the in the case of like uh, Mount Assiniboine or uh, Tombstone Park, which is up in in uh, the Yukon, uh, one of our northern territories here. That's very uh, far we away. actually we can actually it's very far away. Yeah, we were wow. actually just there in the summer, and it was super cool. But uh, it, uh, you uh, you Private fly there, and you actually fly in. Um, yeah. you, uh, we there's a bunch of chartered helicopters that'll uh, yeah. that'll take you out there. So that way you don't have to lug you know your fifty pounds of gear and backpacking stuff. But if you want to do that, uh, we'll we'll also be offering the the more adventure type tours where wow. um, we'll, it'll be kind of like a backpack in and. Um, it's that's also something that uh, Evan and I are quite um, uh, enthusiastic about. We do a lot of uh, yeah backpacking trips. Um, we've done some uh, some kayak stuff, and so yeah, land, sea, or air, <laughs> we, we'll okay. take you somewhere cool. <laughs> What's the give me the guy that was in Star Wars? He's a famous German documentary director. Um, blanking on his name at the moment, but he did the the guy the grizzly i think it's about the guy who was in the yukon or alaska with the bears oh yes 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 yes. uh anyway you gotta do a tour oh it's warner Warner herzog warner herzog do the herzog (laughs) the herzog like grizzly survivor tour yeah um, exactly where you go to where the guy was eaten by grizzlies (laughs) (laughs) that's really exciting i actually want to share something um, so oh, yes, a really yeah. good old friend of mine, I met him through a Minneapolis artist. I'm going to do a couple of shout outs to Matt Jennings music, Matt Jennings on Minneapolis. Because of Matt, I connected to him when I was in Minneapolis. Well, I met all the people that are in the movie Witness Underground um, through the Nuclear Girl for Music community. I met Matt. And then later I was living in Colorado and I, and I met through Matt in like in the green room or whatever behind backstage, mm-hmm. essentially with Matt, a photographer friend from Minneapolis of his, um, Drew Carlson, it's Drew Carlson photography out of denver he's now based in denver so we were both living in colorado and um through through drew i randomly put a thing on the internet one day this is like a little bit of a personal story but i was like my <laughs> volkswagen van my camper mach- adventure machine is in st louis the ex-girlfriend has been keeping it and now she wants to leave the state and abandoned my thing is anybody want to rescue my volkswagen and drew who had only met the one time <laughs> backstage at this minneapolis concert in boulder colorado was like i'll go get it and then Drew, Drew Carlson's an adventure f- uh, photographer, and he does like um, cars and car racing photography, and he does like big ads. Oh, nice. for, like, oh that's awesome! Yeah. He's a really cool, cool. guy, and um, he's really in. He did well. Not, I ended up living with him and his wife as like when I popped back into. I was living in Vietnam for years. I popped back in the states to do some engineering work, 
and Drew had my van for all these years. So it was like, oh, can I just like pay for like the bedroom at your <laughs> at your house? So that became this like really interesting relationship. And I learned from living with Drew and hanging out with him and his wife, Cindy, lovely couple. Uh, they're amazing. Um, that Drew does adventure photography for bird watching. And so they do these huge bus oh, tours where cool. he's like, he's the bus driver, but he also teaches photography. Yeah. And he, they go to all these spots at sunrises and sunsets and make amazing opportunities for people to do adventure photography. And it was, it's been really interesting to see him run that as a business. And, and just you, I would like to connect you to, because he actually helped us with the, um, the key interview. He, oh, yeah, all, that would be all awesome. the lighting gear is his. And also I, mm-hmm. the second camera I bought from him. So like Drew's like a part of the film. He's in the credits. Um, in, nice. in the, <laughs> the underground thing but he's also an adventure photographer and i think the fact that this, you're talking about not just like driving a bus to a beautiful spot you're like let's get in a helicopter and live in the wild with yes <laughs> in the yukon <laughs> territory with grizzly bears <laughs> is a very different type of uh adventure photography package it's very canadian <laughs> very yes, <wild>. yeah <laughs> that's really cool um, but I'd love to get yeah, you guys. That's what we got up here is uh, snow mountains. Yeah, that would be, that would be awesome. I'd, I'd love that. Thank you. So is it <laughs> when it comes to like the business side of it, it sounds like you work with an mm-hmm. award-winning photographer, but that there's more yes. than just him. It's like, here's a collective of independent photographers. Does that sound right? Or are you, like, uh, it's it's actually band? primarily, it, um, it's primarily Evan and us like within the studio, but they're like, depending on the job, sometimes like we do have a, a network of people that if we need like, yeah, second shooters or third shooters or, or, or assistants and stuff like that, then, um, there's definitely a network of people that we, that we pull on. Okay. For sure. And for the adventure thing, is that going to be each, each one, each country is going to be run by a different person or do you like go as a team? Uh, uh, no, we'll be, yeah, we'll be going as a team. So it'll be, yeah, like, um, yeah, Ev- Evan will be the lead and then um, I'll be there to support uh, Sherpa packs for people if they want stuff like that. <laughs> Photo Photographer and Sherpa in one. Yeah. <laughs> God, <how are> you? <laughs> yeah. Cool. I can do um, it all. <laughs> that's so exciting and fun. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah. I love it. I, I want that job. Yeah. To hire me. <laughs> oh yeah I, I, hey come on a tour <laughs> we'll, we'll, do the, we'll do the documentary of the adventure tours um regardless of what happens it'll be what do they call that it's like verite um cinema verite oh, uh, where you, ver- you don't you don't care yes. what the results are um <laughs> yeah it's just after whatever happened <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> sorry i can't feed you client um you're just gonna have to starve just, to death i'm making a movie over here yeah <laughs> you're, gonna have, you're gonna have to hunt for rabbits in the wild um, yeah no. <laughs> no that's fun um all jokes aside um what's the name of the, the adventure tours oh i want to catch you with one more person oh, in Alaska. Uh, go mad nomad um steven nomad. Okay. steven bug no he does adventure tours all over the world with him and his his um korean wife um juno runaway juno they've done adventure tours and um and also not so adventurous but like cool travel tours um with resorts and like hotels and stuff um as well in many many countries so like they would be a great connection because they're actually right there you know only the next country over from alaska yeah totally very big piece (laughs) of the big planet up there but um you know they're in the neighborhood Mm -hmm. yes yeah shout out and they, we've we uh, i i learned actually when we were up there we recently uh completed a not a highway but they they fully paved the road up to tuktayaktuk which is one of the northernmost cities in uh in the yukon arctic kind of area there wow we had road paving news live on we had this on <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> big, big news in the yukon very territory. exciting yeah breaking story <laughs> <laughs> but that's probably going to the arctic circle kind of like you're up there or the Arctic Ocean. Yes, yeah, it's like I think I think it's one of uh I don't think it's the most northern city, but it's one of the most for sure. Very cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. Then you can you'll probably end up in some adventure film fests and there are a few really good ones and there's one in Banff that's like yes. well, a tours Banff adventure film fest um, is amazing. Uh I I think uh we didn't submit for um, cause they, they, uh, they focus, they focus on video, but, uh, Evan actually submitted an exhibit for that festival, if I remember correctly. Oh, so his so work cool. was on display there. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, at BAMP, at the festival itself. Yes. Yeah. I think That's they had, cool. yeah, they had like a little, that an exhibition of, um, photographers and that. So yeah, I, I don't know if there are any awards presented for the photography side, but, um, yeah, his work, his work was on display and, uh, and featured there. It was really cool. It's really exciting. 
There's also, mm-hmm. there was a, I saw Banff in Denver, Colorado, because they tour Banff around the world mm-hmm. after yes, the yeah. premieres. And it's like, maybe not all the films, but a lot of them, and they get the director. Some directors or people involved to come out and represent their films. But yeah, very cool uh, project. Some of the best adventure films ever. I think I might have seen Miru because of that. But oh, okay, I nice. I don't know if you saw that. You, you know that one? It's like yeah, seven years. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, there's also one where some guy tried to like, he's like, I'm going to ride a bike from like Washington state to the Arctic circle. And it's like, he's like pushing a bike <laughs> through the snow in the Arctic yeah. circle. Like this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's so interesting. There was also Boulder, Boulder adventure film fest for a long time. And I, um, pay, uh, there's a Peruvian man who ran it um, was like the director of it. Super cool guy. We, whenever we hung out, we always had the best time talking. I think they nice. closed that one. <laughs> it was like film festivals are a lot of work okay. to run. But, that's true yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're making if you're making content capturing like right for getting some uh good footage to do at least a short at an adventure film fest getting it a bamf would be yes huge. definitely yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we do we yeah we uh, yeah i get a, i get a lot of um i've been doing primarily like um like behind the scenes stuff when we're on uh trips like that so yeah i do want to put that together into something for sure <laughs> that's really cool yeah i want to see that yeah that's great content yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, if you want to ever review it i'd be happy to take a look behind the scenes and oh uh, yeah you, awesome like, I will, yeah i'll gladly take you up on that cool <laughs> awesome uh, okay one more time your company where you want to send people for the tours oh yes okay. is uh Sharko studios my comment has failed to post a witness underground let's try again <laughs> oh maybe it's because it's a link maybe it doesn't like the link well, let's try uh name of the we got a someone's enjoying our interview i'm glad to hear that thank you sdr yeah thank you Sharko Studios there, there it okay. is everybody Sharko it's in Studios, the comments yeah. we'll also put it in the description once we close the uh, interview <laughs> and I think this is a good <laughs> time for good. that so we have a super yeah, exciting perfect. news everybody check out <laughs> windowsunderground.com for the kickstarter we have three days to go so we're not we're in the last days everybody it's the, my religious joke of the week we're in the last days of the <laughs> and um, it's all over after this but you no, know, thank you so much, everybody, for for paying attention and for checking out Scott Arisa's work. And that was a really fun conversation, Scott. I really appreciate all of your help. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with everything. Stay in touch. Um, and shout yeah. out to Filmocracy for connecting us. You guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care, Scott. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. You too.